Hello, welcome to Pro Mixing and Mastering. Today I'm going to show you how to mix an instrumental or a beat before the vocals. So before you get into the vocals, you've got to make sure that you work on the instrumental first. So right now I need to balance this instrumental before I move on to the vocals. As you can see, I have the, the vocals of my singer right here and I've just muted them off, muted them so that I first I first work on the instrumental before I go to, to the vocals. And this is the secret. If you can balance the instrumental, then the vocals are just going to work out the way they are supposed to work out. So here we go. The first thing that I love to do is uh, check out the kick and this is the kick. So. I am using empty drum kit. I just have to just, this is the kick, snare, hat, uh, cymbals and crashers. Basically it's a beautiful one. So let, let, let's go, let me just uh, go to the kick. And as you can see, I have nothing on my kick right now. So what I'm going to try to do is just try to add, go to drums and then try to add. The first thing that I love to add is just CLA drums, a stereo. Just try to see how it's going to work out uh, together with the rest of the instrumentals. So I'm just going to click P so this can rot rotate. And then I'm going to come to transport cycle right there. So let's try this out. This is before. And this is after. Um right now I feel like the this instrumental doesn't need a really like uh fuller kick that has a lot of like low end it needs a kick which is like less uh which has less low end so this this is what i've discovered so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to like uh put down the sub and see how it's gonna work out Then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the reverb and just pull down the reverb, take it out or just switch it off. You can come there and switch it off and then uh, see how it works out. I'm looking for a kick that a little bit bites uh, as you can see I've come to my treble or a little a little bit of the highs just to uh, it's on bite I just want it to be like not too not too much of the low end but to have it just a little bit at the same time remember what you're looking for is your kick to be able to blend with the instrument or with the piano or with the uh, um, bass with together with the um trumpets so this is what i'm trying to uh to get to right now i want to arrive to a certain place where i feel like the kick is blending together with the piano without really like uh fighting with each other yeah so this is uh before and this is after
or maybe let's try to replace the kick with uh, something else so let me go to remember it's all about finding the right instrument if you can find the right instrument then the entire song is just gonna work out the problem is whenever you put the wrong instruments like if the kick is not trying to fit in replace it and find something that is really gonna work out together with uh, the vocals so right now i'm trying to imagine how these are female vocals so i need a kick that is not too much of having a low end but something that like cuts through and that is really gonna blend well with uh the female vocals so let me try to use drums lm7 and see how this kick right here this this one right this one is gonna work out let's see go to my inserts and see how CLA 2 is working out this is uh let me switch it off and then if I like it off then I'm gonna keep it that way I like it without CLA 2 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in um, I'm gonna go to edit channel and then I'm gonna use the equalizer and EQ just try to shape the the kick the way I want it to be like this I don't feel it, it looks like wow it's too much like 12.2 uh positive 12.2 is like too much right but it feels good right there and if it feels good then just keep it the way it is then what i'm gonna do right now is just to um let me let me uh double click on this and then what I'm gonna do is just try to reduce the volume from here and just try to blend the kick uh, so that the kick can blend together with uh, blending with uh, um, piano. Seeing that the piano is like, is what I wanna keep, like the piano has that melody that I wanna keep. So that melody is gonna be like the leading melody and I want the leading melody like to, uh, to blend together with the kick. So here we go. watch what i'm doing i'm trying to uh, i have increased the kick right here uh around uh five uh eight eight k somewhere there so what I, what i'm trying to do right now is just try to reduce the volume this side so i can just try to blend it in uh, blend it in and see how it's going to work out with the piano and the rest of the instruments Yeah, right there. So negative one point uh one point one five fifteen is really working out for this kick kick drum. So see what I've done. Um, I've just boosted this. The reason why I have done this is because I wanna have a little bit of a bite. That t -t is what I'm looking for in uh in this instrumental why because that's the way the instrumental is going like and seeing that female vocals are a little bit higher i want the, the the kick to a little bit bite just a little bit so it's good right there i, I like it uh so let me come to the snare this is the snare And uh, what I'm using is hypersonic, and I'm using so, uh, so on drums. This is what I'm using, 
and right now it sounds really like good dub it sounds good like i love the way the snare is sounding but i'm i'm gonna try it, like to uh add in some effects but if the effects uh, are gonna make it sound worse than the way i want it to sound like the way it is and i'm just gonna take them out so it's not every time that you need to like add the effect sometimes if it's good the way it is leave it the way it is so let's see What I feel like I should just do to the snare is just try to like reduce it just a little bit. So um, let me let me just go to open mixer and then I'm gonna go to snare. Where are you? Where are you? Where is the snare? Where is the snare? So here's the snare. So what I'm gonna do is just try to reduce it from here. But before that, I'm just gonna go to input gain and try to give it negative two so that I create some room for uh, the other instruments and also try to like, um, I'm also thinking about the mastering process once I'm done with the mixing. So I'm gonna hold shift and I'm just gonna, um, oops. Then I'm just gonna let, let me let me bring back this one. I have to work on this one, so I'm gonna put it on negative two, two point zero, and this is how it sounds like. negative two so right there the snare is good so i've just uh given it negative two for room so that's not gonna clip and then next i'm gonna like check out the hat i use saw drums hypersonic 1.2 uh, 1 1.0 something like that all right i love the way it, it's like sounding sounds live I, I love the way i played that it sounds live and that's what i was looking for so right now i'm gonna go to um uh i used purity one pad the reason why you should like use warm pads on your gospel songs is uh, simply because you want to fill up spaces and at the same time warm pads makes your sound warmer like just brings out the warmth uh messaging you know uses it uh a lot of uh like a lot of gospel songs you you will find a warm pad so make sure you use this warm pad all you gotta do is just come to presets and then come to uh, GM normal and then use warm pad this pad is really really like a go-to whenever you are like mixing or making a gospel instrumental so it's really really nice sounds like this very nice um pad let me just uh, go into the inserts and see if we can like try to make it if it sounds good then i'm just gonna leave it the way it is All right, it sounds good. I have just like reduced uh, the mix of volume right here just a little bit, a negative 10.23. And then next, I wanna check out this. I am using Keys on Classic. This is a beautiful uh, plugin and also Yamaha Grand Piano, very nice. Let me just increase the release a little bit. It's like sustain and then 
um the reverb i'm gonna reduce it just a little bit then i'll i'm gonna try to to like add it from the inserts so here we go very important to always check what's really happening inside there so this is the piano uh, that I played in so this one is a little bit higher as you can see the rest of the instrument so this one is like uh, jumping out so I can use a compressor to like try to like tame this one but since it's just alone what I'm gonna do is like is that uh, is this I'm gonna try to like reduce it to uh, 74 so that it stops jumping up and down like that then next what, I, what, 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 what I'm gonna do to the piano is that I'm gonna add um, my favorite compressor when it comes to like pianos I'm gonna use a stock plugin Cubase's um, uh, compressor then what I'm gonna do is just try to um, rem uh, turn off the auto and then I'm gonna put it take it I'm gonna take it to manual so so I can increase the gain from here for now I'm gonna leave the way everything is then the hold I'm gonna bring it all the way to zero so let me try to increase the gain and see how these default settings are gonna work out on the piano Alright, the compressor is just doing a little bit of some compression just to glue it up together and just uh, bring out that good uh, warm sound. So what I'm going to do right now, what you do is go to your EQ and then try to, uh, let's see if I can like fatten uh, the piano just a little bit to add some like low end, especially around 500, uh, 500, 200. So let me try to work around this area and see if the piano is going to sound good together with the rest of the instruments. nice it's, it sounds good so um i'm just gonna add a second um eq so i'm gonna use pro q2 uh just to get rid of the um harsh frequencies so with this one it's limited because it, it only has one two three and four so with fab filter pro q2 it has many options so i'm gonna try to like uh cut down maybe around 2k if not 2k then i'm gonna try 10k and 5k see which, see which frequency is just uh trying to like disturb me a little bit so here we go
um the frequency that was really really like too harsh was uh is found around 1000k and then 5k 5000 is like a good frequency uh, when it comes to this piano so i just boosted it up a little bit to positive 3.75 so um it works out then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back to the compress and just try to to like compress it just a little bit and see if i can raise the volume so here we go And of course don't forget to save sounds good right now so next i'm gonna go to uh my saxophone i am using dvs saxophone it's a beautiful saxophone a very very nice sounds original and this is how it sounds like feel like it needs a little bit of reverb though it comes with uh its own reverb like depth and the rest like size reverb though i want something that cuts through i'm not really gonna give it too much so um i, I think i'm gonna go to the eq cubase eq and see if i can shape the sound so here we go All right, um, I'm going to add FabFilter Pro Q2 so I can be able to like control it um, from there. Then I'm just going to put this on 30 then uh, see how I can like control the sound. There is, there, there is this unnecessary sound all the way from 20 to, uh, to close to 50. So I, I, I don't need this one, maybe 25, yeah. So it's good to always like clean up your instruments and be able to like create space for mixing. So here we go. all right it sounds good though i feel like it's missing something so what i'm gonna do is uh throw in a reverb reverb a so let me see if i can put reverb a on that one Then there is also another frequency which keeps jumping up and down. I just need to find it. So here we go. Let's search for that frequency.
Next, let me add um a compressor, a Cubase compressor, and see how it's gonna work out. Sounds good, glued up together right now. I feel like, wow, it's it's good where it is. And I'm just going to try to increase the depth just a little bit. And then um, what I'm going to do is, let me check out the inside. And there are some prolonged, like these ones. But all the same, it's okay as long as we like compress them. Now reduce the volume from the mixer just a little bit. And what I'm gonna try to do now is try to pan the saxophone a little bit, uh, 32. 32 right Now you really have to be careful because whenever you, you are like balancing the instrument or there are some like instruments which try like to fight other instruments for example the saxophone is fighting with the bright so what I'm gonna with the fantasy I mean so what I'm gonna do is try to go to Nexus and and try to look at this fantasy so this is like our fantasy and dream then I am using Arabian Nights too so I'm just gonna try to control these, uh, they sound like this. And this you can listen, they are like, f um, s uh, at some points they are like having the same frequencies with the uh, saxophone like this. So we, we need like to find a way in which like we can try to uh, take the fantasy to a certain place and then take this uh, saxophone to a certain place like the saxophone is already taken right 32 panned right 32 so i'm gonna try to pan uh the fantasy to like the left left 32 and just listen to how it sounds like Don't they sound much better? Yeah, they sound much better. And I'm gonna come to like the, the EQ and try to work on the highs, fantasy highs, so I can like reduce them a little bit so they don't really like fight with the saxophone. So here we go. Yeah, just a little bit now it sounds much 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 better and what I'm gonna do is just try to like um, increase the volume the fantasy volume since we've taken it to left panned it to the left 32 left so let's try to like bring back the volume Can I throw like um compressor yeah a, a compressor on the on, on the fantasy L let me try to do this let me try to like 
just glue just a little bit of glue let me put it on like just the way it is and listen to this hold is taken out then release i don't want the release like to be prolonged i just want it to be like fast release and since the fantasy is like has those prolonging uh bell like effect so what i want is for this like to uh be very very fast and then I i'm just gonna try to put the peak on 50 percent somewhere there and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go to nexus um and check out this uh the delay is just um the feedback and also try to see if i can reduce the decay maybe on two or maybe put it on zero uh, let me listen to this uh, sometimes you just need to go to uh the plugin and work it out from there all right sounds good i have turned off um the delay from the fantasy it was like prolonging and also making that background noise so i had to take it out and then my reverb is on room uh though yeah i'm gonna leave it there for now then next i'm gonna go to um basically this is uh like this is just my effect that i put this the effect just a, an effect um then this is the bass played bass this one right here oh i need to do a little bit of some eq so i'm gonna use fab filter pro q work on the bass yeah um for now the bass is gonna be off and see how it is now I need um, a compressor on the bass because it's a live bass so I need a compressor and just try to let me check out uh, do we have fretless bass let's see how it sounds like So I'm going to pick up uh, a preset, I've picked up a preset called Upright Bass and what I'm going to do is just try to like tweak it around till I find a place where I feel like the bass is sitting well. So um, here we go.
What I love about the bass is that I played it uh, long enough for me to cut and choose what I want. So I love this part, the beginning of this part right here. And then I'm going to just cut and then cut the parts that I love and then replace them with the parts which are not good. So here we go. A lot of boxiness which I need to take out around uh, 200 somewhere here. I love the beginning like I'm gonna cut this then I'm gonna cut this then what I'm gonna do is um, yeah put that one there right here This part right here is a little bit too boxy, so I'm just gonna replace it, drag this one here and put it there since that's the verse. So where the snare is gonna end that's where the vocals are really like literally the the lead vocal is gonna sit there so what i'm gonna do is just try to reduce the snare just a little bit so here we go
the snare is working out on negative 3.65 then I'm gonna try later to see if the snare can work out with the reverb on though I'm trying like to get a, a, a like um, a dry signal that is really not gonna be like too wet so I'm gonna try to like put um, a reverb on the snare and if it works out then we are gonna just keep it the way it is but if it fails to then take it out reverb uh, a so here we go so what I'm gonna do is try to drag this all the way down to a place I feel like the reverb has uh, started uh, uh, having an effect on the snare so here we go Taking out the pre-delay, I don't need it on the snare. Definitely need some high, just a little bit. I'll come back to the snare. So we are on the bass, balancing the bass. Okay, I love this part right there. So this, uh, I'm, I'm gonna replace this with this one and then try to do this. And then I'm gonna bring this one right here. And then this one is just gonna come right there. And this one is gonna come right there. In case you're uh, wondering, uh, when the keys like be different. No, I know because I played literally like the whole song keeps just rotating and having the same keys so there is no problem i can still like bring the bass here and bring it there so it's it's good then now i'm gonna get this one right here and just um bring it right there and then try to do that let's see what i'm gonna do right now is just try to like um gain it a little bit shift and then drop it down to negative two i love to bring down uh to negative two especially when you're doing uh a light gain staging you just have to bring it down just a little bit so it doesn't clip 
That one right there is just gotta go out. It's off. Let me try this one. Now of course what I'm gonna do is just try to like crossfade everything so I don't get bumps and then uh, go to the volume and just try to blend it in just a little bit. So that my volume is like the best volume is right there. Well, space for mastering and I think it's okay for now. I'm still balancing the snare and trying to like make everything work out the way they are supposed to work out. Alright guys, I think the instrumentation is okay right now. So what I'm gonna do is just try to uh, duplicate the the few ins or the EFX to the places I feel like they are supposed to, they are supposed to be like this one right here. So I'm gonna put it also right. Here. Uh, somewhere somewhere here somewhere here yeah just before right after like this bar starts like before this bar starts so we put it right here so that Immediately it finishes, then we go into the chorus. Uh, just like that, then control D, then what I'm gonna do is just try to like 
This is the last part, so try to put it there. Yeah, and um, try to, let me check, why did I put this one here? So this one is just gonna go out. Always save your projects. So right now, let me see. So these are like the beginnings, like the, the intro. Alright guys, this is Pro Mixing and Mastering. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, tomorrow I'll be doing mixing, uh, working on the vocals and try to see how everything is just going to work out with this. So I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe.